we've seen that using a parameter, we're able to go and describe the graphs of all sorts of bizarre curves, curves that we couldn't express just as the graph of a function. Now, back when we were focused on the graph of a function, we developed a large amount of calculus. We saw, for example, what the tangent to the graph of a function was. We saw how to figure out the area under some curve when our curve was the graph of a function. We saw how to figure out the arc length for some curve when our curve was the graph of a function. We saw how we could rotate a curve and be able to figure out what the surface area of that rotation was. All these different little bits of calculus that applied to the graphs of functions. So what we want to do is redo a bunch of that calculus, but in the language of parametric curves. And we'll be able to reproduce, in this particular video, the formula for tangents to curves when the curves are expressed parametrically. For instance, if I have like a point here, I want to be able to know what is the slope of that tangent line and what would be the formula for the equation of that line. But there's sort of a a, a more interesting case than the one I drew. What if I look at this particular point right there? In this scenario, you might think that there's one tangent line that looks like that, that sort of going nicely along one curve, but that there is also a tangent line that looks like this. So as we move to parametric curves, which are allowed to have weird properties like having intersections, it might not be just a single tangent at a point, it might be multiple tangents at a point. Suppose we have the familiar situation that y is just equal to f of x. In other words, y can be expressed as some function of x. And this might not be true for this entire curve. As you can see, it, it, it isn't just one function of x. It fails the vertical line test. But if I zoom in on, on one little portion of it, like say just that portion, that portion I could believe was the graph of a function. So I'm going to look in some region where I really do have a graph of a function if I, if I restrict my domain. And then I want to imagine that x is a function of t and that y is a function of t as well. So in that case, if, if I want to look at what the derivative of y with respect to t is, I can apply the chain rule. I know that y is a function f of x and then x is a function of t. So in other words, this is the derivative with respect to t of the composition function f of x of t. So this is exactly the scenario where I can apply the chain rule. So this is going to be the derivative of f with respect to x multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to t. So this is me applying the chain rule on maybe not the entire parametric curve, but on a little portion of the parametric curve where it can be expressed as the graph of a function. And if I prefer to change my notation, uh, y is f of x, so I can call this dy dx times dx dt. And finally, I could rearrange this formula for dy dx dividing out by dx dt, and that would give me this. I have a formula for the derivative dy dx, which is just the slope of a line, dy dx, that's the, the derivative of y with respect to x, that's our slope of our line. And it is this quotient, the derivative of y with respect to t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. So if I give you uh, an x of t and a y of t, you just take those two derivatives and you take the quotient and that's going to get, tell you the slope of the tangent line. There's also a formula I can do in the exact same way by applying the chain rule but just up one level and that's going to give me a formula for the second derivative, derivative with respect to t of the first derivative quotient out by the derivative of x with respect to t. All right, so in this example, I've given you a parametric curve. I've got an x of t and I've got a y of t. And the question is, what is the equation of the tangent lines, or perhaps just the slope of the tangent lines, at this particular point, x equal to zero and y equal to four? So according to our formula, I need to figure out x prime and y prime, the derivatives of x and y both respect, with respect to t. So x prime of t is gonna be equal to five t to the fourth, minus 12t squared, and y prime of t is going to be equal to 2t. Now, if I think about how I normally do this, I would take the value of t and I would plug it in and I'd say, so x prime at some particular number. But the problem is, I don't know what value of t is going to give me the point x equal to 0, y equal to 4. So that's something I'm going to have to figure it out. So I want my x value to be equal to 0. I want to know what t is going to be equal to 0 here. 
And my expression, I'm going to factor out a few copies of t here. So this is going to be t cubed times t squared minus 4. And that is going to imply that t is equal to the, 0 is a possibility for sure. But also t equal to 2 is a possibility and t equal to minus 2 is a possibility. So just plugging in the x coordinate, it, it leaves a bunch of different values of t that could be the case that would all give the same x coordinate. Again, this is not the graph of a function. Normally, there would only be one such value, but for parametric curves, it might not be the case. Likewise, I want to set 4 equal to y of t, which of course is equal to t squared. And if 4 is equal to t squared, that implies that t is equal to 2, or it implies that t is equal to minus 2. Now, if I compare these two things, uh, both of the two constraints I have, the x and y coordinate, both have that t could either be equal to 2 or minus 2. It could be 2 or minus 2. There was one case that came up in x, the t equal to 0 possibility, that was not a possibility for y. And so I can disregard that. But nonetheless, I still have two different values for the possible t. So the first if I'm going to do is if I want to look at what dy dx is, the first thing I'm going to do is evaluate it at t equal to positive 2, because that was one of my cases. And the formula tells us that dy dx is going to be equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. So in other words, dy dt, this is going to be 2t, all divided out by 5 t to the fourth minus 12 t squared, and all of this evaluated t to the 2. I'm going to make my life just a little bit easier by canceling a t from the top and the bottom. So this is t divided by 5t cubed minus 12t evaluated t equal to 2. And therefore, 2 divided by 8 times 5 is 40 minus 24, which is 2 divided out by 16, which is equal to 1 eighth. And I can repeat the commutation for t equal to minus 2, and I get the value minus 8, which pairs with the 1 8 that I got from before. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, this calculation dy dx tells me the slope at this particular point, 0, 4. But the slope of this tangent line appears to be two different things. So what is really going on here? It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what I have here is I went to Wolfram Alpha, I plotted in my parametric curves, and it spat out this particular graph. And if I investigate this point x equal to 0, y equal to 4, I see that there's really two different possible tangent lines. There's one which I'll call m1, and, and that looks believable that this has a slope of 1 eighth. And then I have this other one, an m2, which is believable that it has a slope of minus 1 eighth. And note, by the way, that the x and y are scaled differently if you don't think these slopes look appropriately right, but they are. So that is the idea, that, that because of the possibility that you can have these intersections in your parametric curves, you would have multiple different slopes. You're going to have to keep track of them. And sometimes uh, a sketch of the picture is going to make it clear what on earth is going on. By the way, it's also worth noting that down here, there's that other spot where x was equal to 0, but, but y is not equal to 0. So if, if I try to think of oh, this as a graph of a function, it wouldn't work because at the value x equal to 0, there's three different y points. But the, the point x equal to 0 has y equal to 0. So that's not in consideration for being a tangent line. It was sort of this, this little artifact that popped up in the middle of our computation. But it isn't at the right point, so we don't compute the tangent line. If I wanted to go beyond just writing down the slopes and I wanted to write down the equations of the tangent lines, I would say y minus 4, which I'll move the 4 to the other side, so y is equal to 4, and then plus the slope 1 8 times x, or alternatively, y is equal to 4 minus 1 8 times x. So this is our standard form for our equations of tangent lines, and we get two of them because there were these two different t values that got to the same xy coordinate. So the tangent line at that xy coordinate has the two different possible cases, and there they are.